Hi guys, it is currently 12.38. I just got home from Tampa and I've had literally the worst week. <laughs> These past few days have sucked and um, so that's why I'm sitting here filming this video. I thought by being the bigger person was um, not sharing my side of the story. I stuck with that for the past few years. I can't sit here anymore and just let people walk all over me. I'm so tired of people thinking when I have a fallout with someone that it's always my fault, that I'm problematic, that I'm childish, being name called by people that I think thought were my friends, people that I graduated with, my whole class having an opinion on the situation that doesn't even involve them. Especially since we don't even go to school together anymore and like everyone's going off to college. Like why are y'all in my drama? Um, so that's why I'm here today sharing my side of the story with my ex-boyfriend. I just can't have like literally my whole class, the town that I live in, having his back and thinking that he's not in the wrong and that I'm in the wrong for posting how I felt. And I just want to make this little disclaimer, any other girl or guy that does not have a big following like I do post when they break up with someone or they get heartbroken or this friend did this or this friend did that. That's what social media is. You post your opinions, you post how you feel. That's literally what TikTok is. Like everyone posts a sad TikTok here and there. Like so why can't I do it? That's like the biggest thing for me is that I'm being called all these names because I posted how I felt and why I broke up with my boyfriend on the internet. Just because I have a bigger following and I'm just going to say this to the people, especially people from school. Hi, I don't condone the hate. I do not. I don't condone my supporters sending them death threats. No one deserves that even if they mess up. I get that and I totally understand. Even if I posted something like don't send them hate, that doesn't mean that they're gonna stop. I can't control what other people say or what they post or how they act towards the person that I exposed for their faults and their mistakes. I'm allowed to, I'm allowed to post whatever the hell I want. No one has a say in what I can and cannot do. Yes, I did post his mistake and I exposed why we broke up. I didn't lie, I was done lying. I actually wanted to call him out for his bullshit and post why we actually broke up. I have no shame in it because I know my truth and I know that he's in the wrong in this situation. I am sitting here today, tonight, going to share my side of the story with the receipts and proof that I have. My camera died. This is a whole different camera, so it may or may not like go in and out of focusing because this camera just literally sucks. So I'm gonna give a little backstory of of me and my ex-boyfriend, me and Jeffrey had dated for eight months and let me just tell you, we've been through hell and back and I know he's sitting here watching this video and he knows that is 100% true. There are a lot of things that I'm not gonna go over that are just gonna say between me and him, but I know for a fact that he knows what I'm talking about, stuff said, stuff done, um, stuff controlled. So just wanted to hit like the key things that are pretty important as to why he's completely in the wrong and um, he quote unquote cheated, but he claimed that he didn't cheat, but y'all can decide that in the comments if this is cheating or not. Really, there's two different opinions here. Um, so we're gonna start with the beginning of our relationship. I met Jeffrey. September 11th, 2021, which is this video. That was the first time that I met him. He was actually in a relationship then. Did not know, neither did Ellie. So I have receipts of when they first hung out or it might've been the second time. I'm not really sure first like started hanging out. I don't know if this was the first or the second time. So October 31st at 7.40 PM, I texted my mom and I said, can I go to downtown blank where the shops are with Jeffrey to walk and stuff? He asked me. So this is October 31st. We're just like hanging out. I guess you could say that it was talking. I guess if you're hanging out with a boy, he asked like, you know, it's just common sense. So I guess we were like a thing then. I did not know that he was in a relationship at the time. I literally found out today, had no idea, no one even knew. After we hung out on October 31st, continued to talk the first week of November, the second week of November, and then he asked me to be his girlfriend November 24th. There's the receipt of me talking to the girl because I had no idea. I really told her, I was like, I'm so sorry. Like she told me that he had sent her a long ass paragraph, which I saw on November 3rd. Me and Jeffrey were talking then, so literally cheated on the scroll with me. So it's literally like a lose-lose situation. My point being is that even from the beginning of the relationship, it was a facade. It wasn't real. I thought this boy liked me, but he liked another girl. Like, don't ask me to hang out if you're in a relationship. Don't ask me to hang out if you have feelings for another girl. If i known he was in a relationship, I would have never gotten with him. As we start dating, me not knowing that this was happening, <laughs> this girl's friends were commenting on my social media posts with Jeffrey, which was this one where I pulled him in and I was getting comments from the girls' friends 
obviously not knowing why they were hating on me for dating him and now it obviously makes complete sense um he actually lied to me and said that he was not in a relationship that they had broken up in february i don't have receipts of this it was a conversation that we had in person he came over and we sat outside at night and we talked about it and he literally told me to my face that they broke up on february 28th i'm pretty sure is the exact date that he told me they had not spoken since they were not a thing since so obviously the the guy that I'm dating and not knowing like he was still in a relationship I believed him so I just want to make it really clear because I would never homewreck I am not a homewrecker I've had it happen to me in my past relationship with my first boyfriend we all home wrecked our relationship I would never I truly did not know I literally found out today because I talked to her and we're cool she totally understands we're civil yeah. so first off that is my biggest point that the relationship started off with a complete act it's really hard to believe it's really hard to wrap your head around when you find out that specifically when if you just believe Leave the girls that were commenting stuff on my Instagram or my TikTok. This would have all been avoided if I had just listened to them, but I didn't because I wanted to listen to my boyfriend when he told me to my face that they were not together and that they were broken up in February. I also forgot to mention this to back up the beginning of our relationship being a facade. So paragraph was sent to me on June 23rd of this year. He was in a relationship then and he is still lying about it <laughs> to this day. So we're gonna jump from November to February, Valentine's Day. A lot of stuff has happened between November and February. I'm not gonna go into the minor details like I said, but a lot of stuff was said, a lot of stuff was done, a lot of controlling, telling me what to do. He knows what I'm talking about in those few months. Very, very controlling. Where it gets a little complicated because he claims that it was just a mistake and I claim that it was like along the lines of cheating. It may have not been physical, but it definitely was emotionally cheating. He was entertaining another girl. He talked to her on a daily basis, um, literally number four on his best friends list. And Jeffrey loves Snapchat as in like his main way of communicating. Totally get that, nothing wrong with it. He did snap to a, a day to day basis. So for a girl to surpass his guy friends that he's really close with especially for her to be number four a snap streak over like 150 i'm pretty sure i don't remember the exact number it's just a little concerning to me because what was said what was sent what did you guys talk about you know like so many thoughts growing through my head when i found that originally i was on his phone hacking his snapchat i was taking pictures saving it to his memories that's what i was doing and then i had accidentally swiped up you know obviously curious not gonna admit that I wasn't curious to see what was on his phone. I obviously saw the girl. So I went through their safe, like the safe pictures. And I saw things that a boyfriend should only share with his girlfriend. I did not take any I was literally heartbroken. That was like my last priority. My last thought was to take pictures for this reason to expose him. Like that was not a thought of mine. I was more concerned the fact that my boyfriend was emotionally talking to another girl. For one, as a person would never make fake allegations towards someone that I was dating if he didn't do anything wrong. I, I would never lie to people that are really important to me, especially my mom. I would never just like bring that up. This was literally me the night that it happened. I wouldn't be crying over something that was fake. So I'm just saying, I know I don't have receipts of it happening. I would not lie. You can pause and read. They'll just keep switching back and forth. I'm not gonna read them, but they're there for you to read for proof. Definitely not making this up. He 100% knows what I'm talking about. And I even had a talk with his mom. He his mom told me that he was completely in the wrong, that it should have never happened. She should have never been um, that close to him. So it's a known fact. She was actually a fan of me. He followed me on everything. So this girl was aware that he had a girlfriend. Girl literally knew I was in his bio. Like so basically in the save chats, you probably got from the text if you read them. I found her very comfortable enough to send shower pics. I found him comfortable enough to hold up condoms and send to her. Me personally, if I had a boyfriend and I just randomly sent that to a guy, that is a little wrong. What's the purpose of it? Like, what were y'all talking about? A lot of personal things were sent. I get that he can have girls that are friends. I am not saying that he can't have friends that are girls. That's not what I'm getting at at all. For them to talk on a daily day basis, I don't know what was sent because it's Snapchat, everything disappears. I don't know what was sent that was not saved. But for a guy to have a reputation before dating him, you know, it's always a thought in the back of your mind. So is he really telling the truth? Like did nothing really happen? I think it's really hard for 
me to believe that nothing happened because me personally, if I didn't know a guy and I didn't have a connection with him, I would never have sent what he sent to her. That's what happened in February. Since then, I have not trusted him and had the eight months that we dated. So jumping from February to June, around June 14th and like 15th, after I got home from a trip that I brought him on, which was Indiana, he had met my extended family, which is on Mark's side. So like my grandma and like my cousins, my uncles and everything. So he like literally met everyone. But after that trip, a lot of stuff had went on during that trip that I'm not gonna get into. So when I got home, I was just really, really, really overwhelmed. I still didn't trust him then because of everything that had happened in February and February on to June. A lot of stuff that didn't change when I told him it made me feel uncomfortable comfortable never changed he still did it he knows what i'm talking about the point is i did break up with him in june i just really wasn't happy i was drained we were arguing so much and everything on top of what happened in february with me feeling like this i just like i couldn't do it anymore i really need to work on myself like for me i usually put people first before myself and at that time i was putting myself first so that's why i broke up with him but i still loved him with my whole entire heart i waited um, on this break and then i texted him like a few days later and i was like hey can you come over and then I just kind of kind of talked and we got back together and then not only a month later he cheated on me with another girl so these two posts are about what i'm getting ready to talk about and this is like the main thing that i need to make clear because no one believes me that going on a trip with another girl is cheating and that he's not in the wrong for this so let me explain to you why this girl that he's on this trip with is like the biggest problem he coaches this girl's little brother for Little League. So they had known each other for a while and that they were just really, really close. He had a graduation party. I was there, she was there. We were cool. I didn't really know her. I just knew that he coached her little brother. Like he said, he was family friends with them. So obviously I wasn't thinking anything of it. Like, okay, cool. But he had these cards on the tables where you could write advice to them. So we were reading them when we got back to his house after we had cleaned up and we went to his house. Um, his aunt had said, who is and said her name and i was like isn't that the girl that you are close with and like close with her family and i was like i grab the stack of cards and i go through them and i find her card she wrote this knowing that he had a girlfriend and i was also in the same room expect him to be single when he goes to college like are you just completely dismissing the fact that he has a girlfriend i showed him the card and i was like i don't really know what this is like could you explain it to me and this was his words this was in person this girl does not mean shit to me i don't know why she wrote this card you have nothing to worry about nothing ever happened between us just basically reassuring me that she just wrote the card for fun like he doesn't he doesn't know why she wrote the card me as a girl like i would never just randomly write a card like that even if I was close with it like a guy and he was my guy friend like I would never write that to a guy knowing that he has a girlfriend and they plan on staying together in the future it's just it just sat really weird with me we actually uh, took initiative to unfollow her on everything y'all can say that I'm being over dramatic but if it was you in the situation you would be just as confused as to why that card was written didn't know you know whatever um, we had moved on from that but still in the back of my mind so so jumping to the week of when we went to Bush Gardens and I want to specifically talk about this because I posted this video the date and then my mom on then on the family channel this video was posted we went on two dates that week before we broke up or it was the week prior because it was Monday when I broke up with him so me actually being with him I did think he was being really 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 weird and very distant his love language is touch not do any of that at bush gardens and he did not do that when we went on our date and since i posted the tiktok of saying why we broke up i was reading the comments and everyone was saying wow jeffrey seems to be really really off like he seems to be so annoyed with emma and that he's like aggravated i even texted him right here and i said do i annoy you when i talk because i could literally see the disgust in his face he was appalled by me like that's how i felt when i was editing the video that i had to text him do i annoy you when i talk because i felt literally like hurt by the way he was looking at me and like how different he was in the past week and i don't know why i literally don't know why i didn't really think anything of it 
and I was like, hmm, okay, some days you can have off days and be weird, you know, he might have been going through something, I don't really know, but now that our people are also pointing it out and it wasn't just me, it's like making me wonder, like, okay, <laughs> what was going on in that week? Like, why were you being so distant to me? The main reason why we broke up, so that was prior to this whole conversation. So the day we went to Bush Gardens, it was a good date. On the way home, I had went through his phone. Not feeling, obviously, invasion of privacy, but he's my boyfriend and I I just did. I'm not gonna admit that I didn't. I wanted to and I went through it. I had went on his visco and found um, girls pictures that were problems in our relationship. Girls that I was like, why did you favor this? Like what, what is the point of it? Especially knowing when I asked you about it and you lied to me and said that you didn't know her, but you're favoriting her stuff so you know her. This was one girl. Um, I had class with her and she giving me like the weird look and I was like, this girl doesn't seem to like me. So I asked Jeffrey about it because I didn't know any of his past relationships. And I was like, so are you like, like a thing with this girl? And he was like, no, I don't even know her. And then finds out he had favorited her pictures on Visco. Clearly he did know her. So he won light about that girl. So it's the next day, currently editing the video. And I left out a very important thing that I should talk about briefly. At the beginning of our relationship, the girl that I was talking to when he cheated on her with me, um, um, she had told me that this girl that he favorited her stuff was a problem in their relationship too. So not only did he say that he didn't know her, she clearly has been a problem for him in the past relationships he's been in. Then the next girl that I saw was the girl that had wrote this card and I was like, Hmm. So you favorited her stuff on Visco, which is like low-key more personal than liking her Instagram picture. I feel like that's just me because Visco is just a little bit different than just double tapping. You have to hold down the picture and then favorite it. And then it's also secretive because republishing and favoriting are two different things. Favorite, it's just to yourself publishing anyone can see it so i was like okay this is a little weird and so it was a big whole argument all the way home he left and i told him i needed a few days to think i just i really had nothing to say to him because i didn't know what to say because i was still trying to process the fact that that happened with everything else in the past and to really like understand my feelings before i act out of anger or act out of emotion the second day he had dropped off this letter says he's not in the wrong but he is So I forgot to mention something that's really important. So keep this in the back of your mind when I explain the situation with this girl. I was talking to the first girl where Jeffrey cheated on her with me. So I was talking to her and she was like, yeah, this girl was actually a problem in our relationship too. Here's what she told me. And I was like, literally no way because Jeffrey told me nothing has ever happened between him and this girl that wrote the card and is who I'm talking about. So it's the fact that not only was she a problem in me and Jeffrey's relationship, she was also a problem in his other relationships. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So here are the receipts. He texted me Thursday, good morning, didn't respond. And then I finally texted him Saturday, July 23rd at 8, 10 p.m. and said, when does your family come home? He never responded to me. And I texted that last text at 8.42. Yeah, then I texted him again on Monday at 1.07 p.m. So I was on delivered for, if I did the math right, 17 hours. He said, I'm fine, thanks for asking. I have, I think some days apart will be beneficial for us, just out of the blue. After we, after we said we were gonna going to be talking. Here's my search bar. I literally thought my boyfriend got in a car accident because he was all the way up in St. Pete, which is almost two hours away, and he never texted me back. 2.53 p.m. That was our last text. He texted, texted again an hour later and I said, there's no changing how I feel, so I'd like to come over and talk. He then texted me at 9.25 p.m. and says, I'm out of town and won't be back till this weekend. I needed to get away. I needed space. He was already out of town, which was Monday. He was already in a different state. So when I was on delivered for 18 hours, he was traveling, traveling to a different state with a girl. She means jack shit to him. And so after... He said that he was out of town, already in a different state. This is when I broke up with him and this is what I said. People that have him on Snapchat, he posted a picture of him and his hair braided. I was trying to put two and two together. I was trying to figure out where the hell my boyfriend was. He was either with his guy friends, which makes no sense because his hair is braided. Guys can't braid hair. Before I had even posted my TikToks and my story, he posted this. 
I don't know if anyone else has saw it. I don't know if it was a private story with me just on it, but if you did see it, you know that he posted his hair with a braid when he was in a different state with this girl. I literally texted my friend Ellie, here's the screenshots, and I was like, I literally have a gut feeling that he is with her because the next day, him on Be Real, he posts a picture of water fountain. And I'm like, oh my God, that's in Tennessee. He's all the way up in Tennessee. He posted a story. So if I zoom in, I see the girl. I had a gut feeling that would be there and she's sitting in the chair. I said, no way. So he posted that and that's how I found out. I texted Ellie to text this girl that was friends with her just to ask her like, hey, do you know if this girl is in Tennessee? And she said, yes. Ellie texted me and she said, she's in Tennessee. So that's how I found out that they were there together. And I just want to make it clear that it's a family vacation. That's what he told me and that it's not just them. It's just the fact that they're there together. I just want to make it very, very clear. He had left town when we were still together. It makes no sense to me because I, w I would never, I would never. It may not be physically cheating, but it's definitely emotionally cheating. It's cheating. I think it's cheating. Everyone can have an opinion about it. It's my boundaries. He should have never left. He just should have never said yes. Personally think that it's worse than sleeping with another girl. My boyfriend left me to go to a different state with a girl that meant nothing to him, but clearly she means everything to him. A boy would drop his life to go on a last minute family vacation. He told me that he's up there coaching. There's no tournaments up there. I knew that because he told me his schedule. He's a volunteer coach. I said, Jeffrey, it's a family vacation. Like why would, your, why would a family ask you to go coach a team? It just makes no sense. I don't believe a word he said. I just would have never done it to him. I'm probably the worst thing that a person could do to you. It's, it's just the fact that he dropped everything in his life. He had coaching, he had work to go on a trip <laughs> with her but didn't drop everything for me when I was ready to talk to him after he previously broke my heart. Just thought I would mention that. I think it was so painful in the moment that I just, I, I don't feel anything for it anymore. I kind of have just gotten over it, accepted that um, he basically chose to leave me home here and to go on a trip to forget about everything, forget about me and his problems because he needed space. It just, I don't know. I posted those things because I think that is literally the lowest thing I have ever experienced from any fallout I have had with someone. I was literally heartbroken, crying on the floor that my boyfriend um, is there with her. He told me that they were his second family. I was like, oh, so your girlfriend and my family isn't your second family? Two boyfriends I've only dated cheated on me. We were back to stage one. Just sharing it and explaining my side so people can stop saying that I'm the problem when clearly everyone else is the problem. So um, yeah, that's everything that I wanted to point out, all the major key factors. Like I said, there are plenty of more stuff I could go over, but I'm not gonna. And I deserve to be treated a lot more better than how he treated me through the eight months of us dating. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And it's a new day tomorrow. That's all I really have to say. <laughs>